Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's part three of my fitness database. And again, I'll repeat this, even if you're not into fitness and you don't care about tracking calories and workouts and all that, watch this series because I'm going to be covering a lot of cool fundamental database stuff. And it's really for everybody. Fitness is just the example. Now, if you haven't watched parts one or two yet, go watch those first, then come on back. All right, so last time we got our fitness database started. We got our button here to open up our nice little single form. I'm going to move this over here and save it. And in the extended cut, we made a little button down here to get macros. You type in the title of what you're looking for. You hit get macros, and it goes out to the OpenAI chat GPT engine, and it pulls back all of this stuff. We did that in the extended cut. That's really cool. So if you want to learn that, sign up as a member today. But what today we're going to do is a bunch of other stuff. Let's start off by making a continuous form because this is okay to, you know, go through this like this. Okay. All right. But I want to be able to see a nice list of them and I want to add groups. So let's actually, let's start with the groups. I want to be able to put these foods into different groups, right? That'd be breakfast or, or cereal, whatever you want to make it. This would be fruit, right? Um, we've got, uh, you know, other stuff in here, beans, that kind of thing. Whatever you want to put in here, meats, right? So let's start off by making our food groups. So we're going to create table design. We'll keep it simple for now. Uh, food group, because we might have different groups later. So I'm going to call it food group ID. Auto number, someone's beaming in, I see. We'll have a description. And that's good enough for now. Let's save that. Let's call this the food group table. And then what you put in here is really up to you. In fact, I thought about making this user definable because we are going to make this multi user, but I think this is one of those things that might be better off just database wide, but uh, we, we might change that in the future. So in here, what do we got? We got dairy, 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 we got fruits. We got vegetables. We got, what do we got? Grains, like bread, bagels, that kind of stuff. Protein. Protein. That'll be your meats. Uh, legumes, beans, peas, nuts and seeds, right? Uh, oils and fats. My extra virgin olive oil that I love so much. Then, you know, whatever other stuff you feel like tracking in your database, if you want to put in here, um, you know, sweets and desserts, if you have a ho-ho fetish and you love your sweets, right? Uh, beverages, if you have, you know, beverages that have a lot of uh, calories, you want to track that. Things like condiments and sauces, it's usually negligible, you know, spices and seasonings. I do like having a group in here for frozen dinners. Because I love those. I love the Hungry Man frozen dinners. They're not the, it's not the best food for you, but in a pinch, it's just you throw it in. It's like 500 calories. And boom, there you go. I don't eat the desserts, though. Their, their Hungry Man brownies taste like crap. I even emailed the company. I'm like, your food is amazing for, for a frozen dinner. But your brownie? No. It tastes like I'd rather eat cardboard. And I also like to track on here shakes. I like, like the core protein shakes and um, my protein bars. I have a whole bunch of different ones. Like I said before, I'm on a quest to find the best one. <laughs> but that's good enough. There's our food groups. All right, so let's save that. And then we're going to put the food items into a food group. Now, I thought about making this one to many because some foods do fit into multiple groups. But I, I thought maybe it's best just to do it one to many for now. Keep it simple. If we decide to do it later, we can always upgrade. And that will show us how to upgrade stuff too because... Sometimes you start building your database one way and then it ends up going a totally different direction and you got to gut stuff. I'm hoping not to have to do that, but we will if we need to. All right, so now we go to the food table and we'll add a food group ID. That's our foreign key. It's a number of type long integer. I like to keep all of my IDs, even the foreign keys up to the top of the table. So we'll put it right after the primary key. We'll save it. Uh, default value should be zero, but that's fine. Yeah, that's good. All right, so we'll close that. Now we got to assign groups to the food items that we have in here. We'll need a combo box to do it with. Let's put it right below the title. Oh, we got to move this. This is why this slides over here because every time I work on it, it moves over. Uh, let's shrink this up a little bit. I'm going to leave some more room for some different buttons and stuff down here. 
let's take the URL down a notch and we'll put the group in here. Form design, give me my combo box. Drop you right there. Look up the values from a table or query. Where are we getting our data from? Food group T. Bring over both fields. Sort it by description. That looks good. Next, store that value in the food group ID of the food item table. Label, group, and so on. All right, we're good. Now that label comes in way over here. We gotta move it over there. Slide you back this way. And now this is where my OCD kicks in because now these have to line up exactly the right way here. So we're gonna do that. <laughs> we're gonna make this that width. We're gonna, let's, uh, let's do this. Format paint, paste, and then paste over that one. Okay, I think we're good. And we didn't do our tab order yet. So form design, tab order. I'm gonna auto order it. Oh, it's combo 18. We gotta remember to rename that. So we're gonna go, we're gonna, I'm gonna, I like to go down this and then we'll come back up here. So I'm gonna put the right now combo 18. We're gonna put that after added sugar and those buttons won't be in the tab order. I don't like doing that. URL will go after that. And then the notes will go after that. There. All right, hit okay. I like to take buttons out of my tab order. Tab stop, no. And let's give this guy a good name. This will be food group combo. Save it, close it, open it. All right, so this will be in the grains category. What else we got in here? Banana, fruit, fruit, there we go. I'm just gonna copy that because I know there's more. Tangerine, apple, avocado. See now here's where you get kind of iffy because because botanically avocado is a fruit, but nutritionally I think we should this should be stored with oils and fats because you're eating an avocado for its fat, its healthy fat content. So that's just it's, again it's up to you. It's how you want to do it. Uh, beans, legumes. What else we got in here? Blueberries is fruits. Paste. Cheese is dairy. And then of course this is protein. Okay. All right, good to go. Looks like I didn't put the stats in here for, for chicken breast. Let's hit get macros and there it is. See how cool that is? It goes out to open AI and gets the data for you. Sweet. All right, so we got our groups in there. Now I'd like to do a continuous form. Like we have the customer list in the main database and the, in the tech help free template. Um, and I wanna be able to filter that based on the food groups. Right, so I'm gonna say, show me all the dairy, and it shows you the dairy, right? So let's start off with a uh, with a query, create query design. We're gonna need our food group table and our food table. Bring both of those in there. And I wanna see the description of the food group. Now I got two descriptions in here. So we're gonna rename the first one, food group. We're going to alias it and over here. Oh, and we, we will need the ID too if we're doing it for filtering. So put that there. All right. There's our food group description because I hate referring to it as food group T uh, bang description and then food T bang description. So I just changed the names given alias. All right. Over here, we will need the food ID. We will need description from this table. And I'm going to call this the food description like that and then whatever other fields you want to see in your continuous form that's up to you i want to see calories and protein that's what i care about the most the rest of it i don't care bring in whatever you want to bring in okay and sorting it in the query is not really meaningful because we're going to sort it in the form but i'm going to save this as my food with group q all right it's so my food queue with the groups added into it and that's what it looks like okay all right let's set up a continuous form now for foods we're going with green so we'll make this like a slightly different shade of green 
So I'm going to copy my continuous form, copy, paste. We're going to call this our food list, F. Right click, design view. And we're going to first bind the form to that query that we just made, food with group Q. Okay, save it. And let's change the color. I like to open this guy up so I can see what color we got here. And you came in really tiny, didn't you? There you go. So right click, oh, we're already in design mode. Let's click here and go to format and make this, let's go darker green for this one. And down here too. Yeah, there we go. And this can be a light. That light. Perfect. Okay, let's bring in some fields. Um, I'm gonna get rid of these guys. Goodbye. Let's go to our field list, add existing fields. Now, we don't, need the food group in here, but we're going to be filtering on it in a minute, but I do want to see the food group down here. So we're going to see that first, get rid of the label. And then I want to see um, the food description next to it. Get rid of the label. Yeah, you can use different modes to do that. I just like doing it by hand. I've been doing it by hand for years. I'm just used to it. And then I want to see the calories and protein, bring them in, get rid of their labels and put them up here so and they don't need to be that big if you got something with that many calories you got a problem <laughs> i like to use the single label for this so we're just going to get rid of this one stretch this guy across like that and it's a cheap little trick you can just go group and then space and then food item and then space and then calories and protein. There you go. And it got too wide. Let's do this. Perfect. And I like to leave a little bit of space there for the uh, scroll bar. All right, let's see what we got. Save it, close it, open it. All right, looks pretty good. Move it over here, make it bigger. Okay, save that. And this is the time when you make your little changes. And you know what, on second thought, I think we are going to sort this in the query. Let's do that. I was gonna do a sort in the form, but let's start with the sort in here. I'm gonna sort it by the, uh, the food group description. And then sort by the food description. Let's do that. I was gonna use an SQL statement in here, but I think for now this is fine. There we go. Okay, now whether or not you want to allow people to be able to modify stuff on here, that's up to you. Me personally, I generally don't. I don't like giving people the ability to add, remove, and delete stuff from here. I like, I'm, I like to force them to have to open up this guy. Unless you got a situation where you're doing you know, like a bulk edit. But what I like to do in this case, I am going to come in here and I'm going to set this guy so that Allow additions is no, allow deletions is no, and allow edits is no. And if you're gonna do that, you might as well turn off the record selectors. Um, the navigation buttons you can leave on if you want to, because that'll show people that can go down and, and see how many items there are. Um, let's also set the caption here and say food list. Let's see what we're looking like. Oh, and let's make this button open that instead. All right. Uh, oh, see, I got I put a message in here. My API key is in the database still because and that that's triggered when this thing closes because I keep flashing my API key on the screen, which means I then have to log on to OpenAI and change my API key again. But yes, it's OK to close. All right. <laughs> in fact, in today's extended cut, we're going to get rid of that. We're going to take it right out of the database and put it in a file. All right. So let's change this to food list. All right, right click, build event, and we just change this guy to, see here's the code that checks the API key. We can get rid of that today later. Food list F, save that. In fact, members, while you're watching, we are gonna get rid of this because the API key is coming out and I wanna remember to get rid of that. So, goodbye. All right, save it, close it, and from the main menu, hit the food list, Burp, there it is. This won't be open yet. You can see all your stuff. Okay, now we need a way from here to open up that. 
So I like a double click event. That's up to me, up to you, whatever you want to do. That's up to, this one's up to me. What you do is up to you. <laughs> and we'll cover that as well as adding an add button and some other stuff in tomorrow's video. So you know the drill, tune in tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. And members can watch it right now because I am going to keep recording tonight, even though I said last night I was going to do that and I ended up, something came up and I couldn't. But tonight I got some time, so I'm going to be recording. So that's going to do it for part three. Tune in tomorrow for part four. That's going to be your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part four. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.